what's under here? Well, you see the title, you see in the picture I posted the other day. You might not have done, but it's on the, my community post. And this is my 80,000 subscriber special, although just a little bit later, of course. Now, anyone paying attention during the week, so on Wednesday the uh, 6th of December, I hit 80,000 subscribers. And to be honest, on the approach to 80,000 subscribers and even hitting on the day, I was kind of wondering what to do for my 80,000 subscribers. Anyone that's been on the channel long enough will see that in the past I tend to get coloured washing machines and dryers and then do a subscriber special that way around. However, I'm running out of coloured washing machines, so I thought, I've actually come across something I didn't think was going to happen. And that is, I think, I have found the worst washing machine ever to be produced. Yeah. So, bearing in mind, we've had the Inset Moon, which got a 2 out of 10. So, can this machine beat it? Can it get worse than the Inset Moon? Hmm. Yeah. E back. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, welcome to the review of the E back E Care Plus 9 Kilo 1600 Spin Cold Fill Only Version uh, British made washing machine. British being. In that terms. No, it is actually built here. However, if you look deeply within it, it starts out in life as a Fega Innovation. I'll put a picture right now. I, I know looking at that picture, you're thinking, well, there's not much there. But the one thing that it does have is the drum. Now, actually, this particular drum is a bigger version of that drum. But it is essentially the same drum. It's also got the same jet, but not used in the same way. But it is basically the same filter and two pump design also found on the Vega Innovation. It also has the same pumps as the Vega Innovation. Uh, they're pretty decent pumps. They're kind of the same ones you see you find on a Bosch. So that's not really too bad. However, here's where everything starts to fall apart about eBack. <clears throat> We'll start off with some of the lies. Now I know, uh, you know, I know what I'm going to say might sound a bit atrocious. However, a couple of years ago, eBack did put videos on about why to buy an eBack. And they were comparing it to a Bosch Series 4 in the video. And they were quite literally kind of slating Bosch for using a Chinese motor. And stating that they use an LG motor. That's not an LG motor, that's a Cellini motor. And Cellini motors are made in Turkey. And the user that uses most Cellini motors is Vestal, which is also Turkish. This whole design is from Spain, because it's Fager. And there's more traces of that Fager as well. There's going to the factory and supposedly on the videos, there is actually Fager stamped on the machinery. Simply put, to design and come up with a washing machine takes years before it goes into production. So it appears as no coincidence that the eBack was launched just as Vega went bump. Personally, what I think's happened is rather simple. eBack themselves obviously don't want to fork out massive amounts of money for machinery to produce a washing machine. However, because Vega already had that design to build their new washing machines, um, they kind of gave the job to Vega to do, hence why innovation was made. And Vega did make 8 and 9 kilo versions uh, of their machines with that drum. With obviously a tilted drum, of course, but then this became completely straight on. 
Fast forwards, and I'm pretty sure what happened was Vega sold the machinery to EBAC subsequently, meaning they couldn't actually produce any more washing machines other than their smaller integrated versions. And that wasn't holding up either. So, therefore, they went into administration and the company went. <clears throat> so, there's no more Vega machines, but you can buy technically a Vega by buying this EBAC. Right, so you'll find on the back of the drum, printed three times, is where plasma, plasma, and plasma, and they advertise it as a plasma tub, drum, but the plasma is only in how it's been made, and to be fair, plasma is used a lot in drum making. We've got a standard hole pattern, there's nothing fancy about this. Oh, and just to also reiterate, this was bought myself, I bought this myself, used, and it's a 2018 model. So by that point, EBAC had been on the market for a couple of years. But bearing in mind, every other manufacturer, bar maybe Hotpoint and Indesit, had their own specialist kind of drum pattern and D-back just kind of didn't. There is a pro though, and it's how deep this drum is. This is the 9 kilo variant, and if you have the 8 kilo variant, it becomes smaller, and if you have the 7 kilo variant, it becomes even smaller. This 9 kilo is huge. This is probably one of the biggest in its class. The only thing I can think that may be possibly bigger is the 8 kilo in my Grundig, which is also used on the 9 and 10 kilo Grundigs, of course. This is huge. It will happily swallow up a duvet if you try to put one in. I don't know what the drum leader is rated. Anyone that does know, you can let me know down below. So we've got our ratings plate, and it consumes 2,000 watts, which um, is kind of good news because there's no rating for how much uh, the heater uses, but if you take out the fact that it's got this uh, inverter motor from Cellini on it, um, take out about 800, either 150 or 200 watts, and we're looking at sort of like an 1800 watt heater. That's quite good, so it should heat up rather fast. It's also a triple plus energy rated too. I'll just show you the door seal as well. Something interesting a little bit. So it's here. Um, the only problem I have is how this just leads into there. It is going to be quite easy for a sock to leap, loop, loop under there and get swallowed. In fact, you look at the door seal, there's that, which is pretty standard, but there's no holes from the door seal into the tub. So water could possibly, and has done by lots of things, just lie in a small pool here. What you're looking at there is the exit point for the jet. The jet that EBAC go on about. Yeah, it's absolutely great when there's no nozzle on it whatsoever. Now, initially, when I realised that there's no nozzle on this, I thought, well, maybe mine's just come off. It is, of course, used, of course. Maybe it, it, uh, maybe I picked it up and at some point in the last person's ownership, or maybe whilst I've been trying to use it, the nozzle's come off. I thought, well... It couldn't have come off with me, because, of course, I would have spotted it otherwise. Maybe the last owner, you know, maybe they had it and the nozzle came off at some point, who knows? Nope. No, it really is genuinely designed with no nozzle. So, guess where that's aiming at? The door. Yeah, so the thing that they go on about, the jet, aims at the door. That's it. It doesn't even aim at a load at all in any way, shape or form. Great. And yet, like I said, Fager had the design of a jet, which was at the top, and it used to spurt into the load. Why couldn't he put one on? At the bottom, we've got a kick plate. Come on, it's this is a brand new design. Why did they put a kick plate in? Literally every manufacturer at this point has now ditched the kick plate other than Indesit and Hot Points. And I kind of understand with Indesit and Hot Points. Oh, and Whirlpool as well. I can understand with them because, of course, they don't have any money. Uh, but EBAC was a new 
on the market. It could have come on the market without putting one on, but no, he had to put one on and, you know, be awkward. And trying to get it off is awkward. But at least we've got a filter and we've got a drain hose with a clip that doesn't actually clip that in place properly. So I suppose that's nice. And yeah, that's loose. I put it back in, so all it's going to do is rattle about. Great. Right, so to turn the machine on, you have to turn the dial one way or the other. Um, my wash is basically a setting that you use the most and you can save it using this button here and that will save it to this position here so that means you can turn it on to the first setting on this side of the dial press start and it will run that wash cycle that you use the most it uh, presets cotton saver although I may have saved it once anyway to test it. Right, so I'm going to go through all the programs and options um, for both the 7, 8 and 9 kilo. The eCare Plus gives you extra programs um, over the eCare, um, but the eCare Plus is available on the 7, 8 and 9. So it will also be available on the modern day 10 kilo versions as well. Cotton Saver is your normal uh, cotton program that should heat up to its desired temperature. You know, 60, 40, 30, 20, 90, whatever you set it to. It allows you to wash a full load of uh, cotton laundry in about two hours, roughly. Um, and that's obviously made for washing lightly to normal soiled laundry. So you've got variable temperature on this, of course, like you do on any modern machine, which can be adjusted here. So we've got 60, 40, 30, 20, and 90 options. You've also got variable spin. Max spin for the cotton cycle is 1600, and we can lower this and change it. We can have 1200, 800, 600, and no spin. And looking at that time drop, it looks like no spin will also cancel these immediate spins as well. That's a good point there. We've also got delay uh, start, which will go up to 24 hours. And we've got our options here. So we can add a pre-wash, before the main wash, which will carry out a 30 degree uh, wash cycle before the main wash to remove any dust or dirt um, and maybe even possibly pre -treat, treat some stains. And then we've got the intensive option, which intensifies the wash action for um, more heavily soiled items but without increasing the time balance of things. Press it again and they both activate. Press it a fourth time and they both come back off again. Then we've got Time Saver, which saves, well here, 25, 26 minutes, but it has lowered the spin to 1200 and you can't have any faster. So while it saves you 25 minutes on the wash, you're gonna spend longer drying clothes. That's not very good, is it? So, cotton 90 is now two hours, apparently. The other option is rinse hold, which, of course, at the end of the final rinse, it will uh, stop full water with the final rinse water and fabric softener to both de-reduce the creasing within your clothes. 
And then you re when you're ready, you can press start pause and it will go on to the final spin. Hence why the time doesn't change. Then we got our next option, which is extra rinse. Now, pretty much all these cycles will do two rinses as standard, apart from the quick wash and refresh programs, which only do one. So adding an extra rinse will up the rinse count from two to three. Easy iron reduces the spin speed. It changes um, the profile of the rinses and spins after the main wash a little bit. And that helps to reduce the amount of creasing that is set within the laundry. Press it a third time on this button and both Easy Iron and Extra Rinse are both selected. Then we've got Cotton with the standard logo. This is the Cotton Standard 60 Degree Programme and 40 Degree Programme. You can also have 30 and 22. You can't have six, uh, you can't have 90. Now, this common standard program is your eco program that gives you your A++ energy rating. Using the least amount of energy at a much lower temperature than 60 or 40. And will, um, of course, use less water than the rinses too. Again, max load is the max load for whatever the rating is for the machine. Your spin speed can be reduced from 1600. We can have a pre-wash and intensive options. We can have a time saver and rinse hold options, but look how much time, look, time saver. 15 minutes on a four hour cycle. Don't think I'm going to be using time saver on Cotton Eco 60 to save 15 minutes. Then we've got extra rinse and easy iron options, of course. Then we've got the synthetic program, um, made for washing. Now, this all depends on what load size you've got. So if you've got the seven or the eight kilo models, max load of three kilo, which is about one third of a load. If you've got the nine kilo, it's a max load of three and a half kilo. And this is made for washing man-made fibers such as polyester and acrylic. <clears throat> Pretty sets for 40, but obviously you can go all the way up to 6 degrees, which is all right. Max spin is 800, but you can increase it up to 12. Um, we can have, add a pre-wash, which is exactly seven minutes. Oh, I pressed delay by accident. Yeah, we can have pre-wash, which adds on seven minutes. Literally a splash rinse and then that's it. Um, then we've got intensive of course, we've got a uh, time saver which saves an incredible five minutes, really, five minutes, I'm not gonna bother, I wonder if it does the same thing where it reduces the, the, the spin, oh no it doesn't, it keeps it at 1200, I guess that's alright Ebac, I'll give you that. Really? Uh, we've got extra rinse, and of course we've got easy iron, which will lower the spin speed to 800 RPM. Also, under easy iron, you can't have the no spin option, which kind of makes sense, actually. Then we've got the delicate program, which allows you to wash a uh, max of 2 kilo, regardless of what size your machine is, um, of delicate fabrics. It presets at 20. And you can have a max temperature of 30. Mm, that's not good. Uh, max spin speed is 600, which is fine because, of course, the delicate fabrics are supposed to be a gentle wash with a high water level. You've got time saver option, which saves ooh, 10 minutes. That's better than synthetics, I suppose. And you've got the extra rinse option available as well. That's a little bit misleading now, because of course it's beeping to say you can't have these options. So you may press it thinking, oh, I can't have time saver, press start, and time saver is automatically selected. It's not a bad thing. But you might also press that button and go, oh, I can't have rinse holds, and not realise time saver has been selected. 
Mm. Then we've got the mix cycle. This allows you to wash both synthetics and cottons together on the same cycle. So it has a max load of two thirds instead. So max load for the seven and the eight kilo is five kilo and the max load for the nine kilo is six kilo. Hope you understood that. Max temperature, of course, is limited to 40 degrees to prevent cores bleeding to each other, which of course can be reduced. And max spin is 1200 RPM, but it's preset, of course, at 800 RPM, just like synthetics. We've got pre-wash, which adds on a seven minute splash in the water, as well as the intensive option. There's no time saver option, but there is rinse hold. There is an extra rinse option, and there's also an easy iron option which limits the spin to 800 RPM. Then we've got Drum Clean, which isn't made for putting any washing whatsoever. It presets at 90, which can't be changed, and spins at 600 RPM, which can't be changed. And there's going to be no options, of course, because this is a Drum Clean only cycle. Supposedly uses more water, fast, vigorous action to reach the top of the drum and uh, clears it all out. <clears throat> but I don't think I've used it yet. Then we've got Allergy Care, essentially a cotton cycle with three rinses. Um, this allows you to wash um, up to one kilo less than whatever the max load is. So for the seven kilo variants, it's a max load of six. For the eight kilo variants, it's max load is seven kilo. And for this nine kilo variant, the max load is eight kilo. And yeah, it literally is just cotton with extra rinse. And limited to 60 for some reason. Still, max spin is 1600 RPM. We can have intensive, we can have time saver in say 15 minutes, thanks Eback. And we can have rinse hole as well. Uh, we can have extra rinse. So this is probably going to do four rinses once you add that on. And we've also got easy iron option. Then we've got wool hand wash. Now this allows you to wash a max load of no more than two kilos, regardless of what um, load variant you've got. Um, it limits the temperature to 30, but you can go to 40. Thanks, Eback. Wool does wash at 40, unlike other brands that seem to only think it washes at 30. And the spin speed is set at 600. You also find that it's notably quicker than the Delicates program. It is, of course, made for washing wool items and items marked as hand wash. There's Time Saver, which will save you five minutes off your wash cycle. And there's an extra rinse option as well. Then we've got Rinse and Spin, but if you notice it's 50 minutes long, and that's because it's not one rinse, but two. So it's two rinses with a fabric softener and a full, you know, length cotton spin at 1600 RPM. Allows you to rinse up to nine kilo, a full load. <clears throat> of course, the te temperature is 20, but it's going to be obviously cold. Uh, and max spin is for 1600, of course, though, that can be lowered. So if you're rinsing delicates, you could probably set it to 600 RPM instead. You can have time saver which limits the final spin as well as dropping 12 minutes. So it looks like time saver, wherever it seems to work, it's probably mostly on the rinses. Um, we've also got extra rinse option. So probably not the rinse itself then. And we've also got an easy iron option and because this is a cotton cycle, it limits the spin to 1200 RPM. Obviously, you can't select no spin. And we've got spin only. Now, this is a full length cotton spin. So, of course, it presets at 1600. You can spin as much as you want um, within it. You're going to be using this cycle a lot. Um, 
No options. Not even easy, I am. Then we've got the quiet cycle. Now, rinse hold is automatically selected. And you can take it off. <laughs> oh. Okay, maybe not that clever then. Oh. You bet you make me laugh. Max load, believe it or not, is one kilo less than whatever it's, you know, whatever your variance is. So, of course, this max load is eight kilo for this cycle on this nine kilo variant. If you've got the eight kilo variant, it's max load of seven kilo. If you've got the seven kilo variant, it's max load of six kilo. And I can't even figure out what kind of cycle it actually is because at the end of the day, it says in the manual that you'll end with the rinse hold, press plate pause to, um, to carry out the final spin cycle. But you can turn rinse hold off. So it's absolutely pointless. And max temperature is 60, which isn't bad, I suppose. I wonder if this will go to 16. No, it goes to 12. It's not bad, I suppose. Uh, you can add a pre-wash, which adds on a proper pre-wash, not a splash about for seven minutes. As well as the alternative option. I have seen rinse hold is automatically selected, but you can deselect it. You can add on time saver, which now all of a sudden 58 minutes. And that's not bad, because then you can turn rinse hold off. We've now got a one hour program, supposedly. Even this 60 is still now 14. Mm, yeah, yeah, maybe. Uh, we've got extra rinse option, and we've got the easy iron option as well, which limits the spin to 600. <clears throat> and of course, you can have rinse hold. Yeah? Right, we've got the dark cycle. So, this cycle carries out with more water uh, to help dissolve detergent and give better results for your darks. Um, max load is 6 kilo on the 9 kilo variant and 5 kilo on the 8 and 7 kilo variants. So not bad overall. Max spin is 1200 RPM and max temperature is 40. You've also got the pre-wash option, which carries out a proper length 26 minute pre-wash. And you've got the intensive option as well. We've got no time saver, but we have got rinse hold. We've got an extra rinse option. And we've got easy iron option as well, which limits the spin to 600 RPM. Yeah. Okay. Then we've got the quick cycle, which presets at 28 minutes. Max load, it's made for washing lightly soiled items in, of course, around half an hour, thereabouts. However, it gets interesting. So we can increase the temperature, watch, 240. And that adds on time. We can also change the spin to 1200. And that adds on time. Yeah. You want a 1200 spin, it's going to add on 4 extra minutes. You want a 600 spin, or an 800 spin, it's a lot shorter. Then we've got these options here. No pre-wash intensive, no time saver rinse hold, and no extra rinse or easy iron. So there's no options at all for the quick wash. Especially as it only does one rinse. Then we've got the refresh cycle, which if you notice, is exactly the same as the quick. Only it's seven minutes longer. And it does exactly the same as the quick. It allows you to wash three kilos of lightly soiled laundry, regardless of what uh, load size your machine is. Except it's seven minutes longer. But watch this. So let's set the temperature, eh? to 40. The time hasn't gone up. So, in other words, if you want a 20 degree program, you select quick and press start. But if you want a 40 degree program, you actually select refresh and select 40. Huh? Then we can set the spin. We can have no spin 
or 1200. And it doesn't increase the time. Yeah. There's no intensive or pre wash. There's no time saver or rinse hold. There's no extra rinse or easy iron. Yeah, so refresh actually runs for 35 minutes in total, regardless of whether you have 4 degrees or cold, or whether you have 1200 RPM or well, 600 RPM. And I've got my wash and then back off again. So I haven't gone nuts, I haven't completely rammed it full or anything. I've just kind of loaded it up how you're supposed to load it up, which is to load it up like loose loosely to the top and then put your hand in and reach the back of the drill. Right, pull out our drill. And we've got three compartments. We've got our fabric softener, which already has water in it. That's not very good. But anyway, your fabric softener goes in there. That's 35 mil of Lenore. So, um, and even despite having a little bit of water in, it's not going anywhere near to the top. There is a little max level there. Don't go beyond there. Which isn't bad. So that means there's about 100 mil of space in there. Which isn't bad considering all our fabric softeners are concentrated. So really, the most you're going to use is probably about 55 mil. And that's easy. You got a pre-wash compartment there if you select the pre-wash option. But I am going to be honest. I don't think that's going to take very much. And then we've got this side, which is for your main wash. Now that is 100 mils of surf powder. And I'm going to be honest. That's not very big. It looks quite big, but actually, considering that, it's probably around 300 mil max, which isn't bad, but it isn't great. Here, you're going to be struggling to get more than, say, 75 mil of powder in. Which, again, isn't bad for pre-wash, I suppose, because you only usually need about 30, 40, 50 mil in the pre-wash. That's another thing, look. I've just selected rinse hold, but because I selected time saver first, it's dropped the spin, look. So it does not. Um, and that is indicated here with this little door icon. And it's a physical door. There is a little lock icon over here, and that's for your child lock. You can turn on the child lock by selecting set spin speed and delay for a few seconds. You can also turn off the beeper or turn on the beeper by pressing delay and the pre wash button for a few seconds. There's something else too. This actually has a load detection system. So, for the first 10 minutes or so before the wash, it's going to be taking on water and using that data to calculate how big the load is. So, it's uh, currently 23.22. So, this should be finished for just before 1 a.m. We'll see.
Let's see if it gets 1600 then.
Right, then. That was surprising. The surprising bit is that it reached 1600 RPM during that final spin. Because the truth is that this machine is terrible at trying to spin. Well, the fact that the intermediate spin before the final rinse was only at 600 when it should have been at 1000. But never mind, it did do 1600 RPM. That is the second time it's ever done it since I've owned it. I have set it on 1600 multiple times and only twice has it ever got 1600. Other times it will limit the spin to 1200, 1000, 800, 600 or in the case of one particular wash race, not at all. It had half a load of cottons in. Probably no more than about there. And on any other machine, including the Hotpoint, the Grundig Beko, and the Samsung that it was up against, they spun theirs fine and spun at full spin speed. The e back just gave up on the final spin. Yeah. <clears throat> Spinning is not its forte. Neither is its timings. Now, what's also more surprising is that's the first time we use Con 30. I don't actually use 30 degrees very often. But, whenever I use 60 degrees, you can easily add on half an hour to that cotton saver 60 degree time. More likely it takes two and a half hours rather than two. And it's not just cottons. You can add it onto synthetics, um, darks, uh, the algae care and even the wool wash. The wool wash took an hour 30. It added 22 minutes to the wash at 30 degrees. And this is just just to the wash. Not due to imbalances or anything like that. Just the wash alone. It's like these timings are for a hot and cold feed and there's no hot feed on it. You can get of course the machine with a hot feed. But of course that's all presuming that the hot water going in is going to be hot enough for it to heat up quickly enough within that time frame. I do like the fact that it does wait around until it does hit a certain temperature before then performing a wash stage. It's pretty good that way. But then it comes to trying to spin and this is the first machine ever I've ever had where it's suds locked out the drawer. And when I say souls locked, it was souls locking, not terribly bad, but then it just came out the drawer. And that's bad. And it's like it couldn't detect whether there was a souls lock there or not, so it didn't abort or anything. And it kind of spun through at a thousand RPM. But it just came out the drawer. Well, that's the first machine ever I've had where we. Okay, apart from 1980s machines, which I expect to do. But this is the first machine since, oh, 1992, Candy have had, where it's been pouring out the drawer, or somewhere in the machine. It's not good. This isn't on. Then there's the build quality. Yes, the reliability of these uh, is proving somewhat pretty good. Uh, so far, there are have been cases of the spa, uh, the bearings going, but um, other than that, the reliability of the board. I don't think there's been any board issues so far that I know of. The drum itself, it seems to be the problem if it does go. But we are now sort of eight years in. We're eight years on from you know eBay starting to sell these. Um, yeah, a handful of problems here and there. EBAC are pretty much on top of it. They are pretty good when it comes to service. Um, they still offer a pretty good warranty on these as well. You can get a seven year warranty on these, which is pretty good. But, of course, when things do go wrong, you are relying upon that warranty. Not that you really have to rely, rely on it too much. These are pretty well built. They're proving to be pretty well built. But I just don't get how a machine can be so bad at everything to be in a washing machine. It's got to wash clothes and it doesn't do that very well. It's got to rinse clothes and it seems to use a lot of water 
I'm not rinsing very well. Now, I know that machines do two rinses, and hot points have always been doing two rinses, and insects have been doing two rinses for years and years and years with high water levels. And they rinse perfectly fine. But these seem to rinse perfectly with high water levels and somehow not do it right. In fact, just, and then there was that rinse and it just didn't really get very high at all. It's all over the place. It's inconsistent. And of course that final spin, yeah, you might have a 1600 spin once in a full blue moon. I don't get the fact that the time saver, you select time saver, it may save you 5, 10, 15 minutes. But on the cotton cycle, it will also reduce your final spin, meaning it's going to be spending longer in the dryer. That's if, of course, it hits 1200 RPM. It might not. Then there's the jet. I don't get the point of it. It's literally just aimed at the door. And this isn't mine. This is every single e back I've come across. Now, you might be thinking then, of course, maybe, maybe yours is just a sensitive machine. Maybe it's too sensitive on spin. Maybe X, Y, and Z. But it's not. It's not my machine. In fact, it, it hasn't changed in any of these years at all. Um, there are other washer collectors. Some of the earlier versions, uh, I think I got one of the earliest versions uh, within the collections. Some of 2019, 20, and even the current one with the Eco 4060. And they all do exactly the same. Not spin. Or not, or poorly spin. And they're also annoyed at the jets, and they're all annoyed at everything. It's just, it's just the same annoyances. And, and then there's the biggest issue I have with this is it's out of date when it came out. The styling is out of date. It's too cheap looking as well. For how much you're paying, this is far too cheap in terms of looks. It doesn't look like a washing machine at 700 pounds, six or 700 pounds. This looks like a, 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 an indice. It's on par with Indesit in terms of styling. Indesit My Time or whatever with the big door, the current My Time, you know. So I should be looking at this going, this is a 350 quid, 400 quid machine. And it's not, it's 600 quid or in the current state, 700 pounds the only thing saving this machine is its long warranty and to be fair the custom current customer service It's all over the place <clears throat> But I can't see how living with a washing machine as bad as this With a warranty as long as it is is any good Let me just give you an example right of vacuum cleaners, which a lot of you watching right now are, you know, maybe also vacuum fanatics as well as washing machine fanatics. <clears throat> but take the pneumatic, right? It doesn't matter which pneumatic, pick one. But they are super indestructible, they are super reliable, and I don't think anyone has heard anyone actually heard of a pneumatic breaking. They've just gone on and on and on and on and fallen downstairs like ours did. Right? But the actual vacuuming performance of a pneumatic is pretty poor. However, in the right, right situations on the right floors, it's okay. It's pretty good for schools. It's pretty good for commercial premises. It's pretty good for those with uh, hard floors or that those, you know, carpet tiles, etc. It's fine. But when you've got long plush carpet, yeah, go buy something else. Go buy a proper upright. And it's a bit like that, really. What's the point of having that something's reliable, or something that's, well, you know, and I'm just going to say reliable, because when it comes to build quality, the rest of it is rubbish. In fact, it's quite shocking, actually. Just like that pa panel at the bottom, it's already loose and rattling. The fact that that panel's even there at the bottom, it shouldn't be there. It should be styled out. Even the top lid is loose. And it all shows when it's on spin and it's knocking around. And then, of course, there is odd knocks inside the machine. I don't know where they're coming from. There's nothing to say otherwise why it should be doing it. That lid's atrocious, and it's atrocious because of how it's been fixed in. It uses two screws, but I screwed it in, and 
they're just going round and round and round and round. So right now, they're not really tight, and they're not going to get any tighter. It's rubbish. <laughs> it's utter, utter rubbish. The only thing that saves this machine is that drum, which is big enough for duvet. And what the VBAC gone done? Not put a duvet cycle on! <laughs> now don't get me wrong, I'm going to be keeping this machine. You will see this machine in the future. You'll be seeing more cycles of it, because, let's be fair, you know, even how poor it is, whatever, the the there's, there's obviously new cycles to be seen. <clears throat> and you will see them in wash races too. The Z-Back is going to be pretty good up against, not just obviously the Samsung and everything, but I am going to be putting it up against its own competitors. Its own competitors, E-Back themselves, drew up against, which is Bosch and LG. Two names mentioned in their... Uh, buff of selling stuff. And this is what I can't understand either. They're putting LG and Bosch, which are which, that's which as in the question mark, rated as their most reliable brands. They're quite literally trying to say our machine is just as or more reliable than those two brands. And Bosch are selling out to China by having Chinese motors and our machines use an LG motor, which they don't. I don't get it. EBAC are good in certain tiny little aspects and then completely ruined by all the electronic programming that's going on in here. I wouldn't mind if the timings were pretty accurate, but they're not. They're just too far out. It doesn't matter what cycle you select, you'll be lucky if it runs on time. But, what was weird is that it actually did run on time on this particular cycle, for some bizarre reason. It's the only time it's ever done it, it's run on time. In fact, it's run quicker than what you stated. That's bizarre. And yes, it's got a load sensor, yes, it'll take time out for certain load sizes. But, so what? I want something that's good. And unfortunately, when you're up against the likes of this price mark, which is really high-end LGs, uh, really high-end Samsungs, and really, well, to be honest, even Bosch's Series 6, and I'm going to be looking at those, and I'm going to tell you exactly what to buy. One of those. Apart from Samsung, maybe not the Samsung. But yeah, the LG or the Bosch, yeah, go for it. You can have the top of the range hot point, and it's going to be better than this. And that's got a jet <laughs> that sprays on the load. Oh, where did they go so wrong with this? Oh. So, what we're going to rate this out of 10 then. Well, initially, I kind of went 4 out of 10. But as I thought about it more and more and more, the problem I've got is, yes, it's got one or two features that are good, like the big drum. And the draw. I do like the draw, actually. It's all right. But I don't like... I don't like these buttons. They're just... Okay, they, they respond pretty well, actually. They're all right. But we're in an age where we've got touch buttons on nearly every brand going. You know, Beko have got touch buttons. Hot Point have got touch buttons. Zanussi's got touch buttons. Where are Ebacks touch buttons? And this came out when touch buttons were a thing. It just felt a little bit too out of date, uh, even when it came out. The trouble is, we're now eight years on, and EBAC haven't even bothered to update anything other than put Eco4060 on. All this is still the same, all the styling is still the same, the door's still the same. You know, every other manufacturer will still have the same body and the same drum 
and same electronics, but they'll redesign everything just to make it look fresher and newer. Hotpoint do it, Indesit do it, Beko do it. Beko have done it quite a few times over the last couple of years in the same time period. Samsung have done it, but not eBack. You know, I, I, I get that eBack want to enter the washing machine market and they're trying to obviously say that we are building them in Britain. We are building in Britain, that's fine. It is bringing work to Britain. I'm going to give this... Has it beaten the Indesit Moon? Has it beaten the Indesit Moon? Does it get less than 2 out of 10? I got the point of the Indesit Moon, it just was a bit poor for pretty much a lot of people. Um, right, let's think of this really carefully. It gives you a fair selection of programs, but the refresh and quick are absolutely pointless. Having two cycles exactly the same is absolutely pointless. Having no duvet cycle is annoying. Mm. The quiet cycle, being able to turn off rinse holes, it's no longer the quiet cycle. It could do with being renamed to fair quiet, I think should be renamed to daily because it's a pretty quick wash. And have time saver function pre-programmed on it automatically. I'm going to give this... This is hard. So the 9 kilo obviously can take quite a lot of washing, but what about the 7? What about the 7 kilo? Where does that rate? What about just the normal e -care? If I was going to rate this particular machine, I'm going to give this a 3.5 out of 10. It does slightly better than the Zanussi Stupid Aquafall thing with the one paddle, but it doesn't really make much sense anyway. There's a lot of downsides. Well, this is a new student rattled to itself to death. But the 7 kilo, if someone gave me the 7 kilo, I would rate that even worse than an innocent moon, I think. If someone gave me just a normal E-Care 7 kilo, I'd go, this is terrible. Because the low program's missing, of course. But on top of that, you've got a 7 kilo drum, which is still pretty large. But then you are not got room for a duvet or anything. And then you're still played with everything else. You still play with the rubbish programming and all that. So I'd rate the 7 kilo version at 1.5 out of 10. And that's the honest truth. I'd probably give the 8 kilo version 3 out of 10. And this 3.5 simply because of how big the drum is. That's it. That's my only thing about that. That's it. That's everything. I've had enough. Right. Ebac's got a lot of work to do. Just simply altering the programming. Now I don't care if they went back to it and said Cotton 60 is now two and a half hours. At least it's be telling the truth. But they need to do something about time saver. They need to adjust it so it goes to 1600 RPM. They need to then also alter it so the wash bit, the timed wash section after it's heated up to whatever temperature is kind of either massively cut down or just got rid of because that's what time saving should be. I do think you need to do something with a quiet cycle, maybe make it into a daily wash instead by having time saver automatically added. Get rid of quiet, put on time saver instead because you've got an hour cycle there, which isn't too bad. And then you need to do something about quick and refresh. Get rid of one and put a duvet cycle in. And there is space around here. Look, this isn't equal. I would like to see maybe one or two more added programs. It could easily fit one more program there and put something there and possibly one more down here, under here, and then maybe one at the bottom. Maybe one there. There's, there's, there's room there to put a few more cycles on. They just need to come up with ideas of what those cycles should be. Me personally thinking that he needs a sportswear program. <clears throat> um, and it needs. It definitely needs a quick program. Like I said, it needs a daily program or a quick program. Something that's one hour long, something that gets to 60 degrees in one hour. Because that's your competition. 
that's what every other manufacturer is doing. Where's your one hour 60 degree program? Samsung have it with their daily wash. Zanussi have it with their 60 minute easy wash. Hotpoint have it with their fast wash 60. Insert have it with their fast wash 60. Logic have it with their uh, sport program. Everybody has it in some form of way. Where is Ebax one hour 60 degree program? Because that's what everybody's using. If you can sort something like that out, this will be better. Synthetics itself could do with actually getting a little bit longer. I mean, it naturally does run longer. A synthetic 60 degree cycle actually runs for two and a half hours, not one hour 40 like it says. But it needs to then say two hour and a half hours. You need to then push time saver in and get down to an hour and a half. That for me makes sense. Right, I'm done. I'm done ranting and yeah, a lot of you can now go down below, comment down below what you like about this machine, <laughs> if you like anything about this machine. Uh, also, go argue with me, because, you know, I want to see what eBack can do. I don't, I don't want this video to come across as me going, well, eBack shouldn't exist, eBack are terrible and all this, because they're not terrible. They make good dehumidifiers. And getting into the washing machine business, business is going to be a tough job. But if you're going to get into it, you need to do it right. We did Hoover right. We designed and we manufactured Hoover washing machines here. And we did them brilliantly. They are were impeccably well built and very stable. Why can't we do the same now? Personally, if they want to come to me, you need my ideas. You you need my ideas. I represent the washing community. And I know what people want. And unfortunately, EWAC have got it round in their heads of getting, you know, they put a quick wash on there and refresh. But nobody wants it at 600 RPM! <laughs> they want to bang everything in, put it on for 45 minutes, or whatever, and take stuff out at the end, and put it straight in the dryer. That's all they're doing. So, I hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you in another. So don't forget to give this video a like. Uh, don't forget to share it, actually. That'll be quite interesting. You know, share the video, share the British experience of owning an e-back. Also, if you own one of these, let me know down below. Like I said, there's a few in the washer community that have it. There's probably more out there. There's probably some of you watching this now thinking of buying one. Maybe some of you I've got one and you don't like it. Let me know. I'd love to see it. So, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in another video. So, bye for now.